Hey everybody, welcome back to Give Reads. My name is Andrew Givler. I'm a YouTuber, booktuber, author, uh, possibly in that order. I'm not really sure. I like to keep busy, so we never I never really know which one's the most important. Uh, and this is my channel where I like to talk about reading and writing and storytelling and things that I like, things that I dislike, and everything in between because all my friends are tired of me talking to them about books, so I'm gonna talk to you guys instead. Today I'm very excited because I think I just read the best book that I've read in the last year. That's hard to quantify, but um, probably one of the books I'm the most excited about. It's a brand new series. We're going to talk about it. We're going to break it down. Now, before we dive into all that, of course, I got to do the YouTube things. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Okay, both those things really help. This channel's almost partnered. You guys can really help by hitting those buttons. That really pushes us forward and helps us and helps this channel grow and uh, fund me writing more books and doing more cool stuff with this. So the more you help, the better it is for all of us. Now, today I'm going to be talking about this book right here, The Will of the Many, a Hierarchy Book One, Hierarchy Book One. Um, it is by James Islington, um, and I am unfamiliar with James's other work, kind of. Uh, so it's the first book of his that I've read. I was recommended this by Patrick Leo, who's another booktuber. I will tag him in the description below. He was super hyped about it. Um, his description made me intrigued, so I bought it, uh, and I was blown away. So that's basically where we're going to start with. We'll dive into it a little bit. I'm going to do my best to do no spoilers. I will give a little bit of context, okay? Um, but I won't give anything major away. That's the plan. So The Will of Many um, is a book that definitely stands on its own. Um, the, the pitch that I was given is that if you like Red Rising, you will like that. And I and I get why that pitch was made and I agree with it. There are some definite similarities to Red Rising, not in a, in a bad way, but just like some stylistic stuff that I would agree with being similar. It's written in first person present. So one of the things I love about Red Rising is Pierce Brown does a lot of like, you know, uh, when Darrow's talking, he says, I'm running, you know, crashing it, it everything's happening in the moment it's not him recounting what happened later um the will of the the many is is done the same way same tense so uh soul fraud is written in first person past kind of um i do a little a lot of cheating and my editor hates me for it i kind of toggle between those two tenses a little bit it could be him telling the story later or it could be him telling you the story as it's happening he's narrating it i don't know if there's a great a great term for that it's like first person just had it's a plu perfect no that plu perfect is like had had i don't know I don't know how grammar works. I just write books. But so everything that happens is really present, persian, uh, 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 persian. That's not a word. I don't know a word I meant, but it, it, everything's really present and punchy, uh, which I really like. The other thing is you've got sort of a big empire that's got a very structured society system um, where the people at the bottom are being oppressed by the people at the top, yada, yada, yada. Um, the Will of the Many is basically set in a alternate Rome high fantasy world, okay? Which, first of all, I love Rome personally. Um, I'm gonna write a fantasy that's sort of like a Rome vibe at some point. That might be my next one. We'll see. I just think it's a really cool structure. I love the legions. I love a, you know, uh, I, I, I studied Latin a lot. So having Latin splintered in when Latin is like the father language, mother language of uh, most of the European languages and has gotten its way into many, many other lang languages is fun for me. I enjoy that. I make a lot of Latin jokes in the deck collection too. Um, not quite as many that I could make if uh, I wrote a, a, a Latin Roman style book, which is part of the reason I want to do it. So I'm immediately sucked in. So unlike Red Rising, this is fantasy, not sci-fi. So if sci-fi is a reason you're not reading Red Rising, maybe try this and let it conv convince you that this genre is great. Basically, um, the other thing that I really like is Red Rising and uh, Will of the Many do a really good job of not over explaining the intense intricacies of how things work. Sci-fi can get really lost in the weeds of talking about and this science does this and you know, well, obviously the theory of relativity it did it right. I really like that in Red Rising a lot of times Pierce Brown's like, yeah, so I'm using my sling blade and like, yeah, it does some cool stuff, but like you, you, you get the vibe right just from the name. It's kind of similar here. I am going to explain this as something they explain over the book. So be present. But you know, uh, again, these aren't spoilers. Basically, the way their system works is it's structured like a pyramid. So uh, people are put in a number. So like, uh, I think the bottom one is like Octantis or something like that, or Octavi Oct Octa something. And then it goes like Septimus, Sextus, etc. So it's eight, seven, six. Um, and the way that it works is there's some sort of way of drawing people's will. So people on the bottom are forced to give up half of their will, which is sort of like their ambition, their drive, their intelligence. Um, and it is given to other people who can then manifest it to get stronger. And the further up the pyramid you are, the more you get. So uh, the stronger, more powerful you are, but the more responsibility you bear to society. And the whole world has been conquered, as far as we know, by this uh, an empire. So everybody lives under it, but it's corrupt. You know, uh, people aren't completely free. They're almost in sort of a fantasy matrix or or they're, they're suppressed, right? The main character wants to be free of that. He's on the run uh, and he is sort of the um, well-trained orphan, right? Like he knows too much, but he has 
no option. And through a series of events, um, gets himself pulled into a way where he's uh, expected to infiltrate and help bring down this conspiracy that's going on inside the Senate. You got your training schools, you got your, your characters uh, like that. A lot of that's like super classic again. And basically the first book is involving him getting involved, him finding about this stuff, getting exposed to uh, maybe some other forms of magic that are out there and stuff. Maybe, uh, you know, some conspiracy, some bigger picture things in the world. They're not explained, so I don't know. I'm making guesses, but it's 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 a ton of fun. The, the plot is great. The politics are great. The storytelling is great and the characters are just so rich and vivid um they they just they really jump off the page i was hooked on this book the whole time i read it over the course of a weekend uh even though i think it's a, it's a fairly chunky book according to amazon it's 639 pages but i read it in like two and a half days so uh <laughs> i was definitely like Ch -ch -ch. now while we've sort of thrown about this a couple times being like oh it's a lot like red rising it's actually very different from red rising and i don't want to uh oversell it or or shortchange it by making it be like, oh yeah, if you like, uh, it's just a good like, hey, if you like this vibe, you're gonna like this vibe kind of thing. But uh, the story is completely different. It's going in a different direction. And uh, I'm very excited to see where it is, especially how it ends. The ending sets up the next book in a way that I was not expecting uh, and that I'm very, very intrigued to see. The other thing that I just really like is that it's not a very safe book. Um, and, and I mean that in the way that like Game of Thrones isn't safe. Uh, there is danger, right? The Game of Thrones captured everybody's hearts with the Red Wedding, I think. I mean, it was fun before that. Actually, even with Ned Stark's death, right? Book one ends with the perceived main character of, of an ensemble cast dying. No one is safe. I like that danger and the danger feels that present here. Um, and, and it's part of the reason that I really, really got sucked in and was having a great time. So that's pretty good. I think that it's a lot less YA than Red Rising is. Red Rising, I don't know if I would classify it as YA, but it's like YA adjacent, right? Uh, I would give it to a 15 year old and say, here you go, have fun. This I would say like, mm, it's like a 17 year old, you know? There's just like that little bit of jump more where it's like, I don't know, it's hard. I was reading above YA when I was a kid, so I didn't, but it, it's a little more adult. It's a little less um, YA, if that makes sense. And and I enjoy seeing that vibe as well. It, it's the same way that um, uh, Name of the Wind and, uh, Empire of Silence share some vibes. Uh, apart from saying if you like one, you'll like the other. That that's sort of where the comparison ends for me. I can't gush about this book enough. I'm 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 mad that I found out about it so early because I want to read book two. Uh, looks like book two is coming out next year. I highly highly recommend this. And what I also found out is um, I hadn't realized James Islington had written some other books, which is a book that I keep hearing people talk about. And if you look on Amazon here, it's got a 4.4 at 14,000 ratings. Uh, people have gushed about this series. It's been like sort of casually on my TBR, my to be read, to be read, but I, I hadn't given it much time, but this has bumped it up to the top. So I'm halfway through Mort by uh, Pratchett. And as soon as I'm done, I'm gonna be reading The Shadow of What Was Lost. So if you do like this and you want more of his writing, he does have a full completed series that's chilling that I'm gonna be going through and we'll talk about next. So uh, pretty much I can't give this book higher score like i think this is a five out of five for me i i'm truly in love with it i think that um the way that it solves problems the action it goes through the stress the intensity everything is pretty much a five out of five i don't think that i really had a complaint when i read it and i have a lot of complaints when i read a lot of books but there none of my particular pet peeves that really pull me out of a fantasy novel and make me hesitate were present in this so uh i'm gonna say go read this book put it on the top of your list leave some ratings on it let's blow this up uh because this is a series i want to continue and i want more of and there you go that's a little bit of gushing for today uh i hope you guys enjoyed this let me know if you check it out if you've read it or if you've read the lycanius uh trilogy what i'm in store for if i'm excited leave a comment down below hit the like button hit the subscribe button if you want to buy the book you can use my link in the description below too that helps me out and uh i'll see you guys in the next one